Hey guys, how's your Shield K9? I'm here with uh, two of my girls. I've got Isa here, and then I've got Diva there, both Slovak females. I, I really like both of them. They're, they're beautiful dogs, very pretty dogs. Easy girls, first time together. Um, and uh, so we're, we're monitoring the situation. The first two minutes required, ah, ah, the first two minutes required some spankings, right? Not fit for YouTube. And I'm very firm with them because I've seen what uh, what the ladies can do to each other if they decide that they're not going to be friendly. Um, so I know that I have to rule with an iron fist, so to speak. Cookies and hot dogs aren't quite going to cut it. And they need to be able to walk with each other while maintaining peace and harmony. So I have one more bitch in the kennel that I didn't bring out today. Cece, if you remember Cece, she is the SHIT disturber in my group. Um... And uh, Cece had a litter for me, and now is uh, pregnant again. She will be the last, once I've had a couple of successful walks with these two, I'll add Cece, because Cece will 100% try to fight both of them, and I'm gonna have to focus all my attention on getting that proclivity out of her little head. Um, now, Isa is pregnant. I bred her to a male that I have from the Czech Republic named Victor, and Victor, Man, I gotta tell you guys about Victor. You guys are gonna see, start seeing him in some videos. I had sold Victor, and Victor, uh, I had sold him as a personal protection dog, but he was so intense, like in the training process. Like I bought him pretty young, so I didn't quite know what I had. But as I trained him, there are some dogs, you know with training, they calm down, they become a little bit less, you know. Everything kind of goes together. They relax. Victor became more and more and more with training. Okay, it was like pouring gasoline on a fire training that dog. And I said, okay, we have something special here. The intensity of the drive, the hardness, the bravery, the character, the commitment from him. Um, I said, this is something special. Now, if you look at his pedigree, it's really nothing, nothing uh, surprising that that he's like that because he has Sartorius on the bottom very famous and successful kennel and on the top he is Vicar and if you see the Vicar dogs a lot of them have the same characteristics so I guess it's no great surprise that Victor turned out the way he turned out so I said oh my gosh he's great I wish I'd actually not train him as a personal protection dog I put all the foundation on him as a protection dog um, and then I'm like man I could have used him as a sport dog like he would have been a great competition dog he has the intensity and the commitment and the character that I look for but let, you know, it is what it is. I'm gonna, I kept Victor. I bred him to uh, Isa. I, I gave the client another dog that's more suitable for what she can handle and, and what she needs. Um, and uh, Victor is still with us. So I'll, I'll make some videos of Victor later and you guys can kind of see him and maybe get a little bit about what I'm talking about. Um, suffice to say, he's got everything that I want to see in a dog. So Isa is carrying his puppies and Victor is a very big dog, so those of you who want the big dark sables that have the potential for work, I think this is going to be a very special litter. Um, Diva is not pregnant, even though she's a thick girl, but that's okay. I like to keep my girls a little thick. Um, my, my dog girls, not my human girls. Okay, wait. I think we got into a little bit of a bad area here. Some quicksand. Let me struggle out of it. Um, anyways, back to the dogs. What was I saying? Yeah, Victor's awesome. You're going to see videos of Victor. Um, in regards to uh, the bad news. So I was saying that there was some bad news. Canada and the United States has just made the importation of puppies and dogs much more complicated than it used to be. Okay? There's going to be a lot more involved in making it happen than that used to be. It is going to be ridiculous. So that basically means that buyers in Canada are going to be forced to basically find puppies in Canada. It's not going to be so easy now to buy puppies from Europe, buy puppies from the United States. Um, you know, you think United States would be different, but nope, the rules are the same basically for United States and for Europe. So buyers in Canada, good luck to you. You're going to have to find, you're going to basically be selecting only from Canadian breeders from now on. Now for me, as you guys know, I do a lot of importing. So what does, well that means that the, um, that basically means that, uh, you know, my prices are gonna be 
in the end probably going up, okay? S supply and demand. It's gonna be a lot more effort now to get these dogs from Europe than it used to be. A lot more time, money, permits, all these like permits and all these stupid uh, ho hoops and red tape. I guess they made this law because these they, they, remade, they remade the legislation for the importation of dogs because what happened was over the last year, um, people have been importing puppies in job lots because the price for puppies, if you know anything, if you were looking for a puppy during COVID times, you know what happened to the price of dogs. It went through the roof as it was. So what happened was people were going to Europe and they were buying these puppies in like job lots and like importing, you know, like lit, like like 50 puppies or some nonsense like this. And then, of course, some of them were arriving really sick or dead. And then you've got the retail rescues as well where they're, you know, getting like 20 dogs from the third world and they're importing these dogs of no known you know, genetic background or health background, and they're bringing these dogs into the country as well. So anyways, suffice to say, as usual, whenever you ask government to act, government never acts in a smart way. They always overreact. That's why I'm never supporting any kind of legislation beyond the bare, bare minimum. And this was far from the bare minimum. In fact, you know, instead of saying, okay, you know, if you're, if you're gonna bring in more than three puppies or three dogs, the following rules apply. Nope. Anybody, any puppy, any dog, good luck to you. It's going to be hell trying to get them in, especially if you're doing it for commercial. So it used to be that you would get a tax break on commercial purposes because, you know, you're supporting the economy, so on and so forth. Anyways, it's a long story. Suffice to say, the importation of dogs has just become a lot more complicated. But the good news is I already have a lot of dogs. So... And I, I get to focus more on my breeding program because now the, there's more incentive to keep everything in house. You know, the reason why we, we, we import dogs from Europe is because there's a ready supply of young dogs between the ages of six months to two years there, right? Because there's such a huge um, dog sport uh, uh, culture there. Whereas here, there is no dog sport, sport culture. Most people keep a dog, it's a pet. Right, so they're not willing to sell it if it doesn't, you know, perform to their expectations or if somebody offers them the right money because here it's a pet, it's a family member. A lot of the dogs there, the working dogs, they intentionally, there's kennels there that raise them specifically to sell them to the United States and to Canada and all over the world really for law enforcement, for sport purposes. And then of course, like I said, the many sport clubs, sometimes the, the handler and the dog just aren't gelling or the dog isn't uh, extreme enough for the handler or too much in many cases also like the dog car I got he was too much for the handler it's funny because for me he's not at all too much he's a very easy nice dog but for her I don't know what she was doing right but uh, I guess he was too much so I happily took a dog like him um, anyways point being these are the new rules so for the buyers not so good for the sellers, if you know what you're doing, I guess it's going to be good. But for me, I like I like freedom of the market. You know, I don't care if you can go to Europe and get what you want, and it's more than what it's better than whatever you think I've got here. Whatever, man, I don't care. Go for it. You should be able to. Unfortunately, that's no longer the case. Now, we'll still be importing dogs, breeding dogs and puppies and so on and so forth. But it's going to be much more of a hassle than it ever was. I can tell you that much. Anyways, we're almost done here. The girls are tired, it seems. So we're gonna take them home and put them in their kennels and we're gonna do this another couple times and then Cece is gonna come out. Now Isa, look at her, she's getting a little tired because she's all pregnant. Um, I think she's four weeks now. The puppies, I think in this litter, I'm not, I'm not, no word of a lie guys. Like I think these puppies are gonna be fantastic i'm gonna be really excited we'll definitely be keeping back a few for ourselves but uh you can definitely see that she has taken she is pregnant there's probably gonna be some big beautiful puppies in that combination she's a beautiful female not just physically but mentally she's beautiful so anyways thanks for watching guys um i'll probably post this tonight and i'll i'll, I'll do some more bitch walks and we can just talk dogs and life and whatever else is going on